Welcome everyone to a special episode of Wrestling Is Cool, an extra bonus episode for WrestleMania 40. This is our thoughts, this is our reviews. Sancho, WrestleMania 40, your first WrestleMania as a wrestling content creator. How was your experience, brother? Man, I am totally gassed. I can't believe how it must feel to be a wrestler during these two nights, and then you're gonna have to perform tonight for the Raw After Mania. I am gassed. But I, it was awesome to experience this and to be so, like I mentioned multiple times, intimate with the product, like getting really up there and, and, and getting really up there, you know? Yeah, you're, and, you're uh, intimate and up there. That's a intimate, bold intimate. choice of, of combination of words to start the I've podcast. I've been talking for like six hours, all right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it's really entertaining to, to be on this side of it, to be uh, observing so keenly into it. And, and that, that's, you know, critiquing as well, but still maintaining that fandom of wrestling. And it, at, the, at the end of the day, wrestling is cool, my friend. Dude, I, that, was, that was the best way for me to explain my thoughts and feelings to my stream after the there, main huh? event. I just, I, I kept repeating wrestling is cool, not even as a nod to the podcast. It was just my genuine thoughts and feelings. And that's the reason why this podcast is named what it is. Uh, because there were so many times in my life where something cool happens in wrestling and I have no other words to describe it aside from wrestling is cool. And I got to witness another one of those moments with wrestling fans around the world and I couldn't be more grateful and today we're going to be talking about our thoughts about wrestlemania what we thought about each match maybe we'll even get talking about what some of the the webs that we could be leading to towards backlash oh, so when we could see a happening after wrestlemania um just so you know this is an extra bonus episode so please expect a full proper episode of wrestling is cool later this week uh not later this week if you're on patreon because you're actually going to get it on the same day day that this is released so if you want to get it early make sure that you're over on patreon patreon.com slash sati's app and as an extra extra added bonus over on patreon you're going to be getting the raw after wrestlemania review over there exclusively available on patreon so go check it out link in the description link in the top of the of, of the top comment or whatever it is just just look for it patreon.com slash sati's app sancho wrestlemania 40 I guess the best way to go through this is perhaps match by match, or do you? Not, I, I what do you think? Quick overall, overall, quick okay. overall, quick. I would say that this WrestleMania 40 is a return back to what Mania was, what Mania is supposed to be. It's supposed to be the showcase of the mortals. It's supposed to have that magic, and I feel overall 40 nailed so many of its uh, goals and it accomplished a lot for the brand itself of the WWE being the new era they kept talking about this is the new era which is wild to me and i should have seen it coming i was so blindsided by everything else that they were literally telling us santi that cody was going to win they kept saying this is a new era this is the paul levec era now we have official branding for this era it's the paul levec era and that cody was going to win i should have seen it in the stars but i would definitely have to say that this mania is one of the best of all timers up there i'm not quite ready yet to make it all time because i need to see what's the fallout from wrestlemania what where are they going to go where are those interwebs where are those branches are going to go going forward but in terms of match quality storytelling the production which i predicted would be one of the best of all time and it was just from a production standpoint i would have to say it's up there it's at least in the top three for me the thing that will that i if like re, re like re, uh, digesting it a little bit longer that will be a little bit more is is where is it going to be in the in the hit like what we're going to remember for the rest of the time what's that mania moment right and i think this one definitely has it with the fall of roman but i think so many wow the fall of roman uh but but every everybody else is going to have everyone else put in some great work and uh i'm kind of sad too it's dude do you want to know why i'm sad please tell me because la night man Oh. LA Knight became a shill for Slim Jim, dude. This whole time. <laughs> uh, oh man. Buddy, we're content creators. We're shills by nature. You should you should be you you should be proud that the man landed the sponsorship. You should be happy for him. But into hey, Slim the Jim's giving like, away hey, Slim Jim cars. <laughs> what, what is she gonna do with a skylight <laughs> Slim Jim car, dude? You know what I mean? I'm just sitting there ready to glaze, and I'm like, LA Knight, this is your moment, brother. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> you will get we'll get to that match because I thought we'll it was very that. good, but um I'm sad as well, but for an entirely different reason. I'm sad because it's over, but I'm also in that mode where I'm happy that it just happened. 
right? Yeah, like, it, it, it's just, it's, I'm conflicted in terms of feelings because it was the ending of a chapter of professional wrestling that for so long I considered to be the greatest chapter of professional wrestling. But it ended in such a way where it's leaving me to believe that we are now going to go into an even better chapter. So I'm incredibly optimistic. I really feel that this Paul Levesque era is going to build on the shoulders of giants. It's only going to get better. It's going to build on the on the climax, the apex of this bloodline storyline. For everyone that said that Triple H can't land the plane, homie, plane landed. It's it's arrived. It's going through TSA. It's already going through through your baggage. All right, you're already getting pulled aside by TSA because you might be carrying oh, too many liquids. Whoa, it's like <laughs> too many plane hey, references. Hey, <laughs> you got to make sure the Nintendo Switch is outside the bag. You're like I don't, I don't <laughs> switch. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sad it's over, but also just happy that it happened and super excited to see where this world goes. I think I'm a little bit more willing to jump into the pool here, Sancho. I think that was the greatest WrestleMania of all time. It's, it's a bold claim, my uh, friend. And I, I, you know what? I wouldn't be mad at you. I, I would, I would go, all right. I definitely see that, that notion. And I definitely feel that I don't think that's, you wouldn't be labeled as bi like re uh, recency bias in any kind of way mm -hmm. bec because it's a it's a strong argument. It's a strong argument for it. You had all the major titles on the line. You had a, a great pace because if this was all smashed into one WrestleMania, it'd be tough. It'd be yeah. really, really tough to be able to withstand this amount of hype. I couldn't. It, it would make time. it worse. There's it no would actively way. make it worse. A hundred percent. And the crowd, which was frozen in night one, would have had a tough time dealing with everything for for what what's the end. I think knowing that we know way too much in this business the idea of people are saying like stone cold was supposed to be there i mean they kind of set it up for stone cold was supposed to be there and they could not just get a deal for stone cold to be there you, it's hard to like let that part of that go of that possibility of there's an, a multiverse out there with stone cold coming out instead of the undertaker um i i just i just feel like when it comes down to it, the, the reason why I, i'm holding on to not necessarily giving it that moniker yet of the best of all time is it's you look at you know that retirement match of Ric Flair and Shawn. You look at the Triple H Shawn Michaels Hell in a Cell with the Undertaker. You look at other other instances of Hogan and Rock and things like that. They just withstand the test of time. You can even look at Daniel Bryan as you know WrestleMania, and then you look at the the end of the Undertaker streak. So the thing that will kind of stand the the test of time, and the reason why I I am sad as well is like you nailed it. It's the end of the era. People need to understand. And I called it, by the way, that they will not be standing ovation or bowing for Roman. Roman literally got out of the ring as soon as it was over. But the thing that Roman did for this business was he saved wrestling. Let me say that again. Roman Reigns saved wrestling. He brought me back to wrestling with the Bloodline storyline. His tribal chief, Reign, brought me back to wrestling during the pandemic when it was all lost. And I was watching an interview, and I don't remember which one it was, where he said that, he was on the sidelines during the pandemic and he realized that there's an opportunity to present wrestling in a different way. And that because of the silence of the crowd, he could tell the story that he wanted to tell. And he became very methodical in the ring and he started talking trash. And that snarled me in back into wrestling. I was like, there's a wrestler out there talking all this trash, being charming, being funny, being scary at the same time. Like that moment when he had that someone in the arm, like he was like, my arms are big. <laughs> too big for you, well, we right? saw a little bit that uh, my favorite right. moment at Mania was when he hits the crossroads right. and like, Cody kicks sucked. out. <laughs> that move sucks. <laughs> Ain't nobody winning with that. <laughs> right, right. It was so good. And that's what shades of the what I thought that made Roman Reigns so special and so, so unique because Hogan can't do that. John kind of yeah. can't do that. If John wanted to, I think he could. And The Rock, yeah, The Rock would have been too catchphrasy during his trash talking. And you saw like The Rock taking pages from Roman when he was talking look about Look at you box. now. Yeah, look at you now. But he still leans on just the catchphrases. Whereas Roman, he's special. There's a story. Every every match, his trash talking told a really great story. I, I agree with you. Yeah. And so here we are, right? The end of the era, one, two, three. And that's my overall thoughts about it. I know we're going to go and match the yeah. match. And I think there was a siren on my side. So if you're listening, so we're going to go match my match and we're going to figure out how it all shook out. But. Definitely five stars for me. At the well, I guess for uh, for I do have a question for you before we jump sure. into this. You you mentioned that it's in contention, uh, in contention against what? Well, that's the thing. Like, 
in the overall package, it's hard to slate this mania against the others because this mania was a two night part, right? It's it's a different kind. You could definitely say it's the best mania out of the two nights. You would have to compare to like the WrestleMania 38 and WrestleMania 39, right? 38, you got that special main event with Stone Cold. But the thing is, that fallout led to nowhere. Stone Cold wasn't part of the programming. Stone Cold didn't continue to wrestle. Kevin Owens did his own thing. Those Vince McMahon, uh, Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon era WrestleManias didn't really go beyond it. It was just, this is over, the feud's over, it's all set and done. A Paul Avec WrestleMania, we know it's going to continue to last longer. The ripple effects is going to go beyond just this WrestleMania season. We're already going to talk about it day one of Mania, so to speak. They, uh, what was it? Um, Corey Graves said something about have fun this upcoming season or whatever, this launch pad. Uh, the point I was trying to say is I can't say it's the best of all time because those other manias are a different style of mania. Does that make sense? I, I, those manias, I got you. You, you had eight hours yeah. to be able to withstand it. Well, it, it ballooned to eight hours. Yeah. It wasn't like that during the early times. But, you know, you, you got to think about the impact of it. I mean, Hogan and, and Andre, and I know that's old head talk, right? H Hogan and Andre, one slam is forever, like... It's iconic, dude. The slam is iconic. The match itself wasn't that great, you know? If you really would go back to it. But that slam forever is burned in everyone's memory. So I would say that this WrestleMania in the modern era is definitely the best one out of all of the night two uh, type of situations. But is it the best of all time? I, I have to think about it. And I, I think I deserve the right. No, the right yeah, to think you, about you've it. got the right. I mean, I, I got to think about it. You've got, you, you've got it. I feel like I've made my decision um, mostly because I... Every WrestleMania that I've watched, I haven't walked away with the feeling that this one left me of pure. Not even awe. 39? Not, Not even 39? Th I, I think 39 was an awesome WrestleMania. And yeah. I walked away saying that was an awesome WrestleMania. But I didn't mm -hmm. walk away saying that 40 was an awesome WrestleMania. I walked away saying that was the greatest wrestling night of all time. I walked away saying that was the greatest professional wrestling weekend of my life. When you combine night one, night two, NXT stand, stand and, and deliver, deliver. Right. I, I came out saying that was the greatest set of two days of professional wrestling ever. And I've never come out saying that before. You could mm -hmm. say it's recency bias, but I've watched enough WrestleManias to be able to confidently tell you that I've never walked away with this particular, this particular feeling before. I think it, 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 in, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I feel very strong about it too, but it's because it had a great culmination of multiple stories. Yeah. Everyone would like to talk about Cody's story, but you had Bailey's story, you had Drew's story going, you had even Seth's story, and we were all invested because the Paul Levesque era storytelling is that it's going to make sure that we all know what is going on. And it, it has all the proper steps to it. There's a great rising action and the climax and all those kind of proper properties of story. In the Vince McMahon storytelling, it will go sidetrack out of nowhere. Yeah. And it will forget things. It will drop things. And you'll forget why are they feuding or they're feuding over something very simple, very black and white heel versus babyface. But in the Paul Levesque era, you've mentioned it before, they remember things, and there's a lot of grayness to everybody. You're not a pure heel. You're not a pure face. Sure, you do some heel tendencies eventually. Drew eventually became a heel. But we were all on board with Drew's right. Like, they pounded it in our heads that Drew was there for his mania moment of winning in front of a crowd. And the dude got it. And then his hubris flew too close to the sun, and it was ripped away. And there's just so many things we could talk about. Yeah. And I, I cannot wait to talk about match my batch. But do you feel that because it wasn't just the main event, like most WrestleManias are, That's we're it. all just here yeah. for the main events, that it was the whole entire card had its moments that stood out? That's exactly how I feel. I, I feel like from head to toe, with one minor blemish, to me, this was perfection. Was it Jimmy and Jay? Yes, it was. It was Jimmy okay. and Jay. Okay. We'll talk about that in a second because we'll I, I have my thoughts on it. But... Even then, if that's your low point, I've seen such a lower points in previous exactly. WrestleManias before <laughs> that if, if Jimmy and Jay is your low point, we are winning. We are feeding. Right. We are feasting. Let's go through this match right. by match now. WrestleMania night one, kicking off with Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch. I'd like to, to start this one off here. Um, Do it. Just for context here. I, I personally really liked Rhea Ripley's entrance. Um 
didn't love the Becky Lynch entrance because it just felt like a big sell uh, ad for her <laughs> book. Um, in terms of the match, Sancho, I really like this. I felt like it was a really good showcase of women's wrestling. It didn't yes. reach the heights of Rhea versus Charlotte, in my opinion. But knowing oh, the Becky context, sick, yeah, yeah knowing the sick, context yeah, yeah. that Becky was sick with strep throat, 102 degree fever, and it's freezing out there. If you didn't tell me those things, I still would have said that was objectively a very good match. But now mm -hmm. knowing the additional context of what she was dealing with, her Michael Jordan flu game, it does actually elevate it for me because now I understand a bit more of the human aspect. Dude, I struggle to get out of bed when I'm sick and, and feverish and she's out there performing in front of 70,000 people. So I can't thank Becky Lynch enough for her performance that night. But I thought the match was nice. Um, there were moments where I legitimately believed that Becky Lynch actually had Rhea Ripley down and out. And there mm -hmm. was a beautiful, gorgeous riptide that reminded me of a of an RKO from out of nowhere. The way that she was like ballet, balleting her and making her like twist around to eventually get her to a It to was a the, riptide. It was the first one. It was, it was the first so, one. so nice. I like this match. In my review, I gave it a thumbs up. And I made a graded video where I gave it a B plus. Where do you stand here? You don't have to do the, I, use the same scale as me. No, I definitely respect that scale. Uh, yeah, this was a great match. I think uh, what I said when I reviewed it, that it was a great legacy building match for Rhea Ripley that will continue to build her queen mommy reign. And I thought Becky was the perfect kind of opponent for this mania. I think I thought Becky had a great strategy, if you want to look at it in terms of how it was produced, where she was trying to work that arm for the disarmor. They kind of built up that arm by wearing a brace uh, weeks leading up to mania. So I thought that was a really cool way to make Rhea look susceptible to a loss. The buckle bomb, the buckle uh, riptide buckle was riptide. sick. Yeah, It was sick. And then the follow-up to the additional riptide was the perfect way to put out Becky Lynch. I was wondering how much of this match got cut because of the illness, but I thought the electric chair uh, counter from the disarmor was very nicely done too. It, it, it wasn't, I would say this year, Becky's best match was actually Nia Jax and The Last Woman Standing. Uh, but I think this was a great performance for Rhea Ripley, and it was so much better than Perth uh, in the Elimination Chamber. And it, it put, it's, I think the main goal for this was to put Rhea Ripley back in the spotlight as someone who has a dominating force and a leader of Judgment Day. So I think there was a, a W all around. It was a great kickoff for WrestleMania 40. And the only historic title reign that survived. Logan Paul too. Hey, yeah, but that's Logan, not historic. Logan, Logan. Not historic. I know. Hey, he's a lot, he's a half year in, bro. Yeah, could, I, I could see him. I, I could see him I holding on to that belt. Me too. For a long time. Me too. Brother. Me too. Me too. Long time. Uh, ladder match. We had uh, the guess two winners: A Town Down Under, Austin Theory, and Grayson How Waller. How did you predict Austin Theory and Waller? Because I really thought that they were going to do a a gold draped faction between. Logan Paul and, and down down under and, I, and and that is where they're going. I I just didn't think that two baby faces were going to win here, which mm, basically left Alex. Judgment Day as the only other heels to potentially win and I didn't think that they were going to retain either of the titles because no. because if you think about it, right? If if Judgment Day had a won one of the titles, they still lost. They lost half the titles. So the if if they were splitting the titles, Judgment Day had to lose both of them in order for it to really feel like a restart of the tag team division. So that would have left True. the only heels other than Judgment Day being A-Town done under to be able to, to, to claim some gold. So I am giving myself a pat on the back for that prediction because I, I knocked that one out of the park. Uh, you did. You did. I, that, that was, it was, you could tell you nailed it because it was so shocking to see the re crowd's reaction. They literally just ran up and grabbed the belt, which There's is something no, that we all None of it like did. slow, the, nothing, Austin nothing. Theory and Grayson Wall just climbing yeah. it up. Yeah, it was great. I th uh, for me, this overall ladder match worked really well because the spots were very creative. You had the Tyler Bate with the spinning ladder uh, spot oh, with yeah, Finn yeah, Balor. Yeah. I thought great. that worked really well. Uh, the, the, a lot of the table spots that DIY did against the New Catch Republic was nasty. The slingshot tornado DDT to the outside table from Gargano was sick. Nasty. I love, I love, oh my God, our truth hot tag moment. Perfect perfect it, it was great it was solid and then you had the Miz trying to remind him that he wasn't trying to get the pin all, all he of got the pin in, though he, he got, got the, the pin, pin. <laughs> he got the pin though and i think well it's interesting hey he pinned he pinned damian priest to the he champion did. right he did. so there's a quite quite interesting thing going on there but uh, so overall i i thought the match was great and didn't overstay its welcome it was a car wreck but it wasn't like a gruesome car wreck there wasn't like any major botches which tend to happen in ladder match i think it worked really well i mean grayson took the power bomb onto the outside ladder filthy. which was nasty too was very filthy um and then hey the new day 
looking awesome out yeah. there in their rocky rocky ring attire it was really cool to see jd mcdonough yeah jd mcdonough took that spot as well and consequences creed looking really strong with xavier woods so there were there was a lot of good moments in this i think they nailed it well the main objective here was split the titles and i thought they did in a very creative way now my question for you santi is do you think they should do this every year for the tag team titles a kind of like a set ladder match where you could split the titles i want to give you my thoughts real quick i don't think they should because not a lot of great tag teams are great ladder match tag teams Does that makes sense because that would limit tag teams like the oc and things of that sort more of the bigger time i the creed brothers would have excelled in this but let's say authors of pain get hot one day they're not going to be a great ladder match team brother there's they're something that i'm not looking forward to this is more for the high flyers the guys sure. who could take heavy spots i don't want this to be an annual thing but i thought for wrestlemania 40 gives a thumbs up out of me I just like ladder matches at WrestleMania. In my preview video, I said, um, you know, if this is your first time watching a WrestleMania ladder match, get ready for a treat. These are the matches that don't mean anything in terms of story. They're just there to give as many people as much WrestleMania shine as possible while yep. get, awarding a new champion. That's always how it's been. The intercontinental ladder matches from the past. Um, the, and, and this one's another great example because the story didn't matter. Not for the, there was a little bit of narrative with R-Truth and Damian Priest, but for the most part, if you didn't know or understand the story, you could still enjoy this because what it was at surface level was just a beautiful symphony of, of chaos. That's what it was designed to be. But for the ones that are looking for, um, as you were talking about earlier in, in the podcast, fallout from this, uh, I, I think that this did everything that it needed to do to set us up for a successful post-WrestleMania ladder match in that the titles are split and they are on, on the SmackDown side of things. They're on a set of young guys that are trying to prove themselves. And on Raw, they're on two veterans that really needed and deserved that WrestleMania moment, but are also in a position where they can drop those belts as early as Raw after Mania and it'll be fine. It'll be okay because their legacies are already set. Uh, so the this allows the tag team division to now flourish and be part of the growth of this new era of professional wrestling, which is exciting. Yes. This is another new beginning. Overall, I really like this. I think it did the job that it needed to do while also being incredibly entertaining. That's where I'm leaning on here. And at the same time, they easily could have split the titles and done like a tournament for it, which I'm glad they didn't do that. At the end of the day, I know we, that's what we wanted that first announcement to be, but a six pack tag team worked really well. It was effective. And it's going to give something to do on SmackDown because SmackDown was getting very, I didn't, I don't mind it, but it's very like vignette promo heavy. There's not a lot of matches that were happening at SmackDown on the road to WrestleMania. So to have at least five, six minutes for a tag team, yeah, all for it. All right, let's move on. Rey Mysterio and Andrade taking on Santos Escobar and Dirty Dominic Mysterio. I'll let you lead this one off. What'd you think? As a Cowboy fan, I'm upset. How dare they get Jason Kelsey and his whatever other guy lineman out there? <laughs> the Eagles suck. How dare they come out there? Did you see the Dallas Cowboys get involved in Mania when they was in Dallas? No. And by the way, as I see in your monitor, why is this ugly green become the theme? The overall Philadelphia color, this eagle green. Yuck, 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 yuck. Says the guy it, literally wearing the green hat right Luigi, now. It's a Luigi hat, all right? Put respect on Luigi. Fair hat. enough. You're Luigi. In regards to this match in itself, I like the addition of Andrade. Thank God they added oh, yeah. Andrade. Without Andrade, it would not have been the same thing because Andrade, I, I said this when I was watching, it's like, this is his coming out party in terms of like, hey, I'm back and this is it. This is the one, like, remember me one. Now you will. I am eat a little baby. And he was fantastic, dude. That spot they did with the electric chair into the double body splash was just... I've never seen Ow. that before. I, I, I've never seen that never. before. That probably happened in AAA for sure. Maybe. I, I'm I, just I, saying, I, yeah. I've never seen that. Never seen it. And if you watch that back again, Andrade just eats his, like, lands right in his face. Yeah. Like, he, has, yeah. he, has, he can't protect himself at all during that. So it was really cool to see that. I, I, I just wish that Dom needs a mania moment as a dub some way, as a heel. He deserved it from this year. Um, him in being included into Legato LWO, it worked well because he they needed that star power for mania. Um, o overall, you have to think about it in terms of just where does LWO and Legato go from here? I think there's a lot of multiple avenues they can go, especially with Carlito. I was hoping for a little bit more of a hint of a Carlito heel turn a little bit there, uh, but we didn't get it. But I, I'm just quite surprised that Andrade just brought it and yeah. he, he deserves a run 
somewhere. And now that Gunther is gone, which is a spoiler if you didn't know, now that Gunther is gone, I think Andrade is slotted, should be in, go for the Intercontinental. Oh, man, he'd be a great representative be great, for that. Dude. Oh, my goodness. Um, so did you like the match? Of course. I, I, oh. I mean, I didn't like the finish because okay. of the, 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 the Eagles. The okay. Eagles that, was, that was the big thing. I was like, uh it okay. felt it felt force it felt shoehorn i felt like the the swerve should have been carlito turning heel at the end i feel like that was a more or, uh, appropriate yeah. swerve if they were trying or just no swerve at all no no fluky finish i listen there's a couple of reasons why i didn't like the finish i'm going to echo everything you said i love the in-ring work i loved the involvement of everyone else outside of the ring the because one of my uh, bum out moments. I was like, man, I'm kind of bummed that the youngsters of LWO and Legato aren't in this because they were cooking. They were, they, 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 they created so many great moments in the ring in the lead up. Uh, but mm -hmm. they, we got all of that. We got all the hype moments with them. Andrade looked like a million bucks. He, he, his luchador move set looks deadly. I feel like that's what makes Andrade stand out is that he's he so makes, big. He's a big dude and he makes these moves look like they're going to decapitate you. He somehow makes like a Huracarana look super painful. But the yep. reason I didn't like this finish, Sancho, is because they were directly involved in the finish, like the Philadelphia Eagles guys. Had they been in the entrance, I would have been great. Like, fine, that's cool. But these guys, what's the reason for their involvement aside from because like literally okay so they're philadelphia eagles players by the way that didn't land with the audience because it's wrestlemania most of the people there aren't from philly they travel from all over the world all over the united states two um what's the connection he wore a mask when he was drunk once and that now that all of a sudden warrants being directly involved in the finish of a WrestleMania match for a feud that involves friends wanting to amputate each other's legs, father and son, uh, splitting families, the return of Andrade El Idolo. I don't think that it warranted them being involved, directly involved in the outcome of the match. I, I To me, it fell flat and kind of ruined a really, really good tag team match. Not ruined because I still think it was good enough for me to give it a thumbs up, but... I felt a little bit robbed and a little bit cheated because I was so invested in the storyline and the ending, the outcome was not at all part of the storyline that I was following. If it was Justin Herbert, you would. Be oh, well, yes, of, of you, course. Absolutely. Yeah, you would have been just throwing TDS. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That's the, it's just a WrestleMania thing, dude. The, the, I, I was thinking about it after night one and going into night two. I was like, well, I haven't feel like this is a mania yet. There's not that celebrity sighting or something totally far-fetched it definitely felt like wrestling pro wrestling booking getting the local star to help out but why where's travis kelsey man Are you too busy with Taylor? <laughs> come on man oh man all right let's move on here to i mean i already kind of spoiled it what i thought was the low point of the show uh jay uso versus jimmy uso i'll lead this one off here okay. um i really felt like this match was hindered by the fact that it didn't have a stipulation. That was yep. my initial thought. Street fight, cage match, hell in a cell, unsanctioned, tribal warfare, whatever it is. I really felt like they needed a stipulation to help elevate the importance of this feud. That this goes beyond just two wrestlers. That it transcends the, the regular bounds of the ropes. That this is a family feud. Give me street fight! Clink. We <laughs> Thank you for, for, for carrying that. I appreciate it. But yeah. um, because there was no stipulation, it forced these guys to basically regress to their tag team move set in a one-on-one -on -one environment. Had this been a street fight, a cage match, it would have forced them to get out of their comfort zone to find unique ways to cause harm to one another, as opposed to this just being 35 super kicks. I was really disappointed by the in-ring action. And on top of that, I was a little bit let down by the lack of narrative in the match when it's two guys that have been part of a very narratively driven storyline in the Bloodline saga. The only bit of narrative that was in here was Jay pulling his punches and Jimmy taking advantage for a split second, right? I get it. Okay, you still hate him to the point where you want to kick his teeth in, but love him enough where you don't want to do it. But there was no, I don't know. It didn't really reach that next gear that bloodline matches tend to hit. And I didn't like that there wasn't a 
follow-up in the ring or something afterwards. It just kind of cut to black. I didn't like it. I, I gave this a thumbs down in my review. I think as to, you know, to speak on the other side, I didn't like the match or overall. I think there was a couple things that were working in this match that if you were to rewatch it again, you would see that they were trying to do some things. It just didn't really come clear. There were times where they were, one would do one move and the other one would do it other. Exactly. It was like a mirror match. One would counter the same way that Jimmy would do it the other way. And they were going back and forth to show, I think the narrative was, is that they're equals. But you mentioned it. The problem is the move sets are just too similar. And at, at the same time, I think the match just started off on the wrong foot. I was expecting a stare down of some sort. Let that build up naturally. But instead they went with Jay can't contain himself and he attacks Jimmy on the entrance. There's a lot of things missing from this match to, to put it over the edge for me. I think when they finally got to that moment where Jimmy was like, stop super kicking me, please. That's when the match started to cook. But by then the audience was already checked out. And, and, and by then I just think you couldn't tell an intimate story at WrestleMania 40. And you're not as good as Roman to tell an intimate story. They were, if that match was in the Thunderdome, I think it would be special. But it wasn't in the Thunderdome. It was in the Lincoln Field, Lincoln Financial Field, and it was 78,000 people were watching. And we can't see that nuance. And if, if you watch it again, Santi, if you give it another chance, you, you'll, you'll pick up on a couple of things that they were doing. Uh, but I, I think the expectations of this match drowned it out before it even got. <laughs> and when you think about their involvement at night two and that spear, and I saw what you tweeted out. You said it was the best thing they ever did the whole time. Yeah. The spear up the ramp. Um, I, I just think that it's unfortunate because the legacy of brother versus brother is hard to keep up with. And if you're watching and you're like an AEW guy, Cody Rhodes versus Dustin Rhodes was a thousand times better. Yeah. Like talk about real, like you mentioned, beyond the ropes action, family versus family, blood versus blood. If you are not a fan of AW, and if you wanted to see a great wrestling match of our times, watch Cody Rhodes versus Dustin Rhodes. 100%. And that gets you super emotional. And that gets you where, where you see where Cody's value is as champion, which we'll get into further. I enjoyed that match a thousand times better. I, think, I just think Jimmy and Jay were just, get, were, they started off on the wrong foot. If they, if they would have started with a stare down, maybe. And like you mentioned, a stipulation match would have hit a lot of their shortcomings. I and that's why... I want to point out, main event J doesn't do it for me. His moveset is is just it's just without Jimmy. Like they belong <laughs> together. Like they truly do belong together. Yeah, peanut butter and jelly are so much better together. Could you eat a peanut butter jelly? Can you eat a peanut butter sandwich without the jelly? I could, but it's not as good. I would say jelly is probably J because I can eat a jelly sandwich without. <laughs> I peanut guess. Butter. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair, and Naomi uh, taking on damage control. I'll let you leave I this one I can just off. hear the comments. Shacho, you're so stupid. <laughs> you know what you should have said? You should have said, you know what I can eat? That sandwich with, with, wow, can't talk. That sandwich with a little bit of glaze. It's been oh, yeah. got into an LA night, Grant. <laughs> Anyways, let's focus here. Um, six woman tag team match. Thoughts? I loved it. Okay. Now, the big three, which is what they're calling themselves, Jay Cargill, Naomi, and Bianca Belair, there's something there. I see their chemistry, and it makes Jade super comfortable. And if you have a comfortable Jade who could ease into the waters of WWE, dip her toe into it, figure out her place, get her timing down, get her promo work ironed out, I think this is a great faction going forward. Is there enough women on the roster right now to be in a trio against other women? I don't know. You maybe you could do something with Candice and Indy Hartwell and maybe throw in Zoe with them. Like, you don't know where they could go. I just feel like I just wish the roster was deeper to give that big three more matches together because they were awesome. Yeah. And I loved it. And I think Damage Control did really well, too. I, I like the way the finish happened with the Poison Miss on to Kyrie, kind of gets all that going on. All of a sudden, chaos happens. You hear the finisher, Naomi, Bianca, and then Jade comes in. I, I just... They did it, man. And it's crazy to me that every time I see Jade Cargill, I, I, it's another baby step forward to greatness. It's another, there's no setbacks. I didn't see any setbacks with her this time around. And that Mania entrance was, this is where the Mania entrances for me started. I was like, oh, cool, dude. You got the Kabuki Warriors with alongside with Dakota Kai coming out with the 
the Japanese uh, dancers and things of that sort. And then you got the the big three looking like I don't know something from He Man with the silver and gold and the Kung Lao coming up with Naomi. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So there, there there was so much of that, and I and I just I'm so excited for Jade Cargill. Uh, if you watch the presser, they talked about inclusions and things of that sort, and I love that Bianca was like, at some point, it's just gonna be. This is the way it is. Yeah, that's just the, how it is. The, that's the norm. This is how it is. And I think for for Jade, I think the reason why she should be happy is this because she's not given the world just yet. She's she's being brought up the right way, and that's just gonna make Jade versus Bianca so good. Absolutely. If they stick together, they yeah. but they need to stick together for like six months, eight months. To make that heel turn from Jade hit harder. Jade and Bianca, tag champs? I, I see it. 100% see it. I see they, it they, too. And then and, and have Naomi kind of be like the talking piece as well. To make, make, I, and, I, and I know this is dumb to say, but, you know, they, they could be the woman's new day. Like, truly, they could free bird it if they want to. Sure. They'll protect Jade a little bit longer. Because I was saying, like, man, Jade Cargill has a hot tag that reminds me a lot of uh, Big E. And it could be reach that potential of Big E. Where he, she just comes in and just destroys everybody. You know, kind of reminds me of the shield as well. When Roman will get that hot tag, everyone's like, all right, Roman's hot tag's gonna be amazing. Give Jade that hot tag for a long time and watch her shoot up to the stars. Because I'm just happy that they didn't build Jade like a Braun Breaker, where they, she just smashes people. Because that's not gonna be fun for Jade. But this is this fun. Was, it was Jade. it was smart. I think it was really smart booking because I also really like this match. Um it was eight minutes, and I felt like in even Though there's six women in this eight minutes, which means that each woman basically gets a minute and a half to shine. Yep. I feel like they all made the most of that time. I felt like damage control looked really great in the moments when they I were meant to look control. great. Yeah, they, so they, sick, they looked they looked really good. Uh, my goodness. Uh, Dakota Kai is amazing. I think she's highly underrated. Um, Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair, Naomi all look great. I love that there was a very clear um end goal in this match which it was the jade cargill hot tag that's what the the entire match was built around and i loved that uh that the tag wasn't your traditional hot tag where she went in and started running and beating right. people up it almost no. felt like when thanos put in the final infinity stone and it like there was like an explosion right uh, or, because because she tagged and then all of damage control stopped in their tracks i i thought it was a really really cool visual i like this match too yeah, it kind of reminds me of like uh, Loki, or say like we have a Hulk, right? Yes. And here comes the Hulk, right? <laughs> um, I, I, I just really do hope, though, if you really, we take the step forward, because this is what the podcast is all about, right? Yes. If we hear me out, brother. I feel like I'm Beetlejuice wearing this, like, oh, wait, man, hear me out. All right. <laughs> um, Tiffany Stratton will create a trio, and Candice LeRae will be a part of it. Oh, that'd be a fun one. And that'd be fun, right? So yeah. you have that heel faction, and that will continue this trio. Of the big three they they need to keep them together if they pull the trigger too soon i think it'll be a missed opportunity for the wwe because these women could work together they could go events together they could promo together they could sell together really well they can make they'll, they will make tickets dude the if you look at the internet they were like wow these women are amazing i agree all right, let's talk about Sami Zayn defeating oh. and ending the longest reigning intercontinental champion in the history of the WWE, Gunther. I want to start off by saying this. I'm just going to come out and flat out and say it. I think the buildup to this match was bad because they Four. did a better job of building up uh, Gable than building up Sami Zayn. Here's the thing. Sami Zayn's entrance when he talked to his wife his son, where he was walking and then ran into Chad Gable. He, they were both about to come out. Chad Gable's like, no, you're going out there by yourself. You're, you're ready for this. And then they embrace each other. And then Sami Zayn, right before he goes through the curtain, Kevin Owens is waiting to embrace him and tell him to go win this. That was a better buildup for this entire feud than the last few weeks. Just that 50 feet that he walked and all three of those interactions, when he came out, I was like, I'm sold. I'm behind Sami Zayn. So kudos to the WWE for realizing that Sami needed one. He needed the bow. He needed the cherry on top. He couldn't just go out there and have a good match. There needed to be one more thing to get us to care about this match. And they found and they did it. And it, you talked about how good the production of the show was. This was my production highlight. 
of the entire show. The Sami Zayn entrance, the walkout, the way that, the fact that they told a story that deep, that quickly in the span of 50 yards, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was bloody brilliant. What did you think of the entrance? The, been making so many videos on the WWE production and the use of the long shot. And for them to calm everybody down and to really just focus on how intimate this story means for Sammy. And that is where Sammy shines the most, where he is the underdog. Where I didn't like the buildup was, is like the WWE doesn't need to tell us he's the underdog. We know that. Yeah. We know Sammy as a wrestler. We've known it so long. And I think what made it work the most is that it, that served as a reminder. It, was, it wasn't a video. Like, sure, they had a video package, but the, it just shows you less is more. And the simplicity of wrestling, and that is what makes it magical. And we suffered so many years with Kevin Dunn or the overproducing of the presentation of wrestling can lead to nauseam and just downright annoying viewage so cynicism from the fan base as well exactly it's like we're not we're not all of us are eight years old we, we yeah sure we want to recapture that magic magics of the kid inside of us but to treat the art of wrestling like cinema like truly do and be like okay we're gonna have a scene with your son your wife your friends and then you're gonna hit the ring and your music's gonna start and you're gonna hear his music before he hits the gorilla position and you're gonna get yourself hyped up like it's like it feels like we're a fly on the wall of of a pro wrestler like we always wanted to be a pro wrestler we always have the dreams of walking out of gorilla and hitting our music and for them to just unveil that for us is really cool and now we are Sami Zayn. We are Sami Zayn walking out into that WrestleMania 40 crowd. That's such a good we, way to put it. That is a brilliant that's way what, to put That's it, yeah. what they did because now we're Sami and now we're facing Gunther, the 666 Intercontinental Reign Man who is undestructible. And we called it here in the Wrestling School podcast that Sami would kick out of all the spamming because that dude ate a lot of power bombs. But it, it didn't bother me that he was super Sami because it didn't feel like he was being over like plot armor for Sami. It was. It felt like he was genuinely reaching a third or fourth gear that Chad Gable brought out of. That's him. it. I I was okay with the plot armor because it felt like we earned the plot armor because we got the training montages with Sami Zayn and Chad Gable. So the plot the same thing armor. With Rocky. Yeah, the plot armor made sense for me because I, I, to me, the way I interpreted the story, and that's the beautiful thing about professional wrestling, you might have a completely different interpretation, is that all of those finishers, 99.9% .9 of the time, he would have beat Sami Zayn right there. But 100%. because he did the training with, with, uh, with Chad Gable, he was able to get that little extra bit of energy because he was more physically and mentally ready to endure all of the damage that Gunther was going to place upon him. So to me, I felt like we earned as fans and Sammy earned that power boost. If we want to even talk about anime, we, he, he was warranted in being super Sammy in that moment. Unlike when, you know, Seth Rollins is, I got a broken back. And then he gets hit with, <laughs> with chairs, nunchucks, gets thrown off a building and he's kicking out from Nakamura. That is not earned plot armor. Right. This not absolutely earned. was. And I was grinning from ear to ear because um, it, it was like the WWE, even in this match that was so highly focused on it being a really good in-ring match decided to tell a great story in the middle of this match of Gunther just shit talking Sammy's wife. The guy that was so, uh, so mentally strong and so impossible to break emotionally and physically Gunther is now taking his eyes off the ball because I don't know. Maybe he, he, at that point he figured he should have won already. Uh, now he's trying to get into Sammy's head, but he, Sammy was prepared for all of it. I just thought he, it was so well crafted. And you saw it from the beginning. He was doing the dodging, right? He was yeah. dodging, getting and, and like dipping and dodging a little bit from the chops. I, I, I think for me, where the match kind of started to tick over is when Guther showed his 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 weakness, which is messing with, you know, the mind games. And he was messing with Sammy's wife. And I was like, as soon as he they cut to that, I was like, oh, you're gonna lose, Gunther. And but the, the the finish was awesome, dude. The haluva kick on the top rope to get him into, um, yeah, that. Oh my god, nasty, nasty. 
Generico, baby. Generico yeah. coming out, dude. I, I think I said this on this podcast, and I think I could be wrong, but I did mention that he would have to dig deep into the bag, and he pulled out the brain buster, something he's never hit ever in the WWE. And I, and I, well, he's I, I never hit thought, it. It was El Generico that hit it. Right, that's people. what I mean. Like I, I thought I thought he would come back and, you know, pull back the, the hands of time and bring back Generico, but what a great thing. And, and that's what WrestleMania is all about, dude is displaying these stories in front of us of good versus bad of relating to a wrestler like sammy and his troubles and seeing him overcome something was was special and spectacular and at the same time i'm i'm surprised that gunther i'm sh i don't know maybe the anyone that was in philly did he get like a a curtain call and while he was walking off i don't know because it was happened during a commercial um but I'm happy for Gunther because he gets to move on to the heavyweight championship now. There's no way he goes back down. I don't think he goes back after the Intercontinental. I think it'd be weird for him to go back after it. He needs to go move on to the heavyweight championship belt. I Not agree. for the Undisputed, but he needs to move on. I agree. Uh, let's talk main event. I'll let you carry this one here. The Bloodline, The Rock and Roman Reigns sticking on Cody Rhodes mm. and Seth freaking Rollins. Give me your thoughts, man. 44 Dude. minutes. 44 minutes. What a slobber knocker, as JR would say. And it, it really was a truly, a, a really weird moment to see The Rock looking great. Great mania entrance as well. Fast and Furious style. Got a lot of the fire and lightning in it. I was truly amazed to think like The Rock, we talked about it. Yeah, he treated this differently where he was like, I need to train for this. I need to train my body for actually wrestling. And the investment really paid off. The Rock looked great. He, he, in when I was watching, I was like, I don't think The Rock's gonna take big bumps. I didn't think he would take a table bump, but I'm, what I meant was it wasn't gonna be suplexes. It wasn't gonna be that kind of wrestling. It was a brawler type style and it protected The Rock. I thought the chemistry between all four was fantastic. You got a taste of The Rock versus Cody, The Rock versus Seth. And just seeing The Rock in his element, it instantly took me back to 2010 Rock. I, I felt like this is probably the best Rock we've seen even better than when he went up against Cena. I don't know. You you would have to tell me that because because that you watch that much more. No, you can't compare them. You can't compare them. They're completely different humans that were in I there. I know they're yeah. they're completely different humans, but the the goal of that Rock was different from this. Yes, rock. yes. That Rock wanted to prove that he still got it as a wrestler, and he wanted to be proved to the world that he was on the level of John Cena. But this Rock understood that he is not the same guy, and he does not have the same body, but he could still perform at a level of the great one the brahma bull it was very 80s and 90s wrestling great tag team when the match really started to cook for me is when the rock was like no i'm the final boss do not do a count out you will be fired. i love that <laughs> like like i'm like wait a minute this is something that vince would do but it was vince it's like some grimy like heel would do but this was the rock the final boss intimidating everybody in that ring and then the bloodline doing low blows doing eye gouges doing a lot of heel stuff and you're like dude there's no way that seth and cody could overcome uh but, but that's to me that the match got really good for me and then when the rock hit that rock guy rock bottom through the table i was like yeah. oh my god oh my god it is happening right in front of us and and you know the, the finish in itself i think you could tether off of it for bloodline you know uh, Roman giving the rock Cody to, to hit him with the rock bottom in the people's elbow. I thought that was really cool. And one of the things I did forget to talk about was a Cody cutter from the people's elbow was nasty. That was awesome. That was awesome. That worked really well. And uh, I, the only thing that, that, that was kind of like a meh to me was I thought Seth Rollins was going to sell his injury more going from into night two. Like they worked that knee really well. And then he didn't really sell it in night two that well. He was back to his jovial self, not yeah. selling the knee. I thought he would be more wounded going into that match. Um, but overall, man, The Rock, he brought it. And he brought me instantly back to when I was a kid in the Attitude Era. And that's The Rock that I know. That I know. Should have they done more, a little bit of Mama Rhodes stuff, maybe? They only had a little bit of that. I mean, they built that up so much. Mama Rhodes. And, uh, I, and I'm surprised, no blood. I thought there would yeah. be a little bit of color. But overall, I had a good time with it, man. It was a, it was a great... WrestleMania worthy match to see Mount Rushmore rock out there with a few future potential next mountain of Mount Rushmore. I, I couldn't agree more. I really like this match. 
I know that it was really slow at the beginning, but that's they were setting the pace. It's a bloodline match, dude. It's a, it's a bloodline, bloodline match. match. That's exactly how it is. I'm glad that you recognize that. I had so many people telling me, oh, this match is slow. It's boring. It's like, dude, did you not watch every other bloodline match that we've always had? It always starts with a lot of grounded and realism moves, a lot of striking, a lot of submissions, a lot of trash talking. And dude, you blink and then all of a sudden you're at the top of the mountain. That's how bloodline matches are, where they do this gradual build to the point where you don't even even realize that you're being built you're you all of a sudden just blink and you're at the apex of the story that they're telling you and i feel like that's what happened here and the rock really like he made this match really feel special i really yeah. think that he was the highlight of this match i i was genuinely shocked at how much offense the rock took he took stomps he took cody cutters uh a spear that he sold magically so that spear. he sold it like honestly that's the greatest spear sell that i've ever seen aside I from maybe like a finish a, I, th I thought so too i think it would have been a brilliant finish there but then he took his own finisher through a table like come yeah. on man like the rock was out there to do to use the lame work. word to do work he was out there to do business he was out there you know to take us on the ride you know he keeps saying that let the let the rock take you on this ride it's bloodline rules um, i'm gonna be so happy when we don't have to hear you say that <laughs> <laughs> i really like this um i was I don't know, man. I was, I was I was in awe the entire time at The Rock. I, I expected the greatness out of all the other three guys. And I should have expected the greatness from The Rock, but it didn't change the fact that I was still genuinely shocked at how good he was. It's not your fault. The Rock did not have a great showing last time around. And everyone predicted that The Rock would get hurt and not do what he do and not sell. But I think the motivation of Stone Cold and Kevin Owens motivated The Rock to be like, wow, Stone Cold go out there and do that. I'm going to do it. And he probably got advice from Stone Cold how to properly train for this. And the one thing I do want to point out is another moment that I genuinely did think it was going to end is when, when Cody forgot, what did he hit? Cody hit the Cody cutter and it ended up being a frog splash from Seth Rollins. Like the timing, it oh, was yeah, like a yeah, blind yeah. tag, like a, no, he hit the crossroads, right? Yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. blind tag crossroads into the a frog splash, which was nasty. It was, it was a, it, the yeah, the, was that, was that a, when the rock was hiding on the outside you didn't know where he was yeah, and then they're pinning yeah, and then yeah, the rock the finally rock, appears right. okay right. yeah yeah, yeah that's rock great with the pull down and, and still didn't get dq'd i think uh the the notion of the payoff bloodline rules worked i thought the like they kind of set it up with that previous raw to get that going to understanding that literally at any moment they could they could cheat and change the uh, how it's going to go i thought the finish was great i think the point the goal of this one was to make the rock look strong and they did it. He literally pinned Cody. Fair, kind of fair and squarey. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, right? He, he They pinned Cody and Roman giving up the seat to Rock, which I think could build up another narrative that I think the Rock's going to take over the bloodline. The Raw after Mania, which is hours away from this recording, the Rock is going to take over the bloodline. The sign of weakness of the tribal chief losing the belt, be uh, giving a black eye to the dynasty of the Rock's family. Will the Rock's gonna take over, and he's gonna do it with new Bloodline members too. Oh. I'm excited, dude. This this was Ooh. this was what this is what I was hoping for night one. I was like, please let the let the Rock and Roman win this because it's gonna make night two even sweeter. But the I I can't. I, it pains me to think that I think this win hurt the Bloodline the most because Bloodline rules meant Cody could do the same thing too. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I you know what I. It wouldn't make it doesn't make sense what I'm about to say, but in my head it makes sense. I almost think you. I almost think that they should have just said that the night two main event was always gonna be bloodline rules. That it was always gonna be no holds barred. Because them making the stipulation of the end of the tag team match saying if the Rock and Roman wins, that it would be bloodline rules by proxy spoil the ending because you with how much they talked about bloodline rules you knew that the night two main event was gonna be bloodline rules so that's literally the most nitty of nitpicking that you could possibly get because i also yeah. thought that this was fantastic it kind of you know to, to continue on the narrative of in game we knew there was another movie after infinity war that's true but we did not think that everybody would get destroyed so the, you know the, at least it was in their back pocket, but I didn't. I, 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 my gut told me that Cody was going to eat this pin, and he did because it it sets up again that Seth let him yeah. down because he was supposed to be the shield. The shield. And if you put night one and night two together, 
And if you just change the time and you had them in one night, Ooh. that'd be wild. All that'd right. Wild. I have a quick question. I, oh, I, I okay. want to play devil's advocate here. Did it bother you that so much of the card was taken up by the bloodline at the end of the day? We talked about it a little bit. We were like, dude, there's so many people that miss out on an opportunity here. Nia Jax, Liv Morgan, Nakamura, right? They could have had some time in the sun, maybe a Tiffany Stratton. But the only thing I felt suffered because of that was their night one entrances were not as great as their night two entrances. That's sure. the only thing. I was just like, oh, they must be saving for something because they just walked out. The Rock got his full like, like good proper oh, entrance yeah. for, for night one. Um, did it bother me? No. Like I felt like it was warranted. Uh, I, I used the I used the term before with Sami Zayn. It felt earned. Like mm. that you you earned my attention for as long as you demanded. That's how I feel. My favorite thing from that was like people were saying, yo, Damian Priest is gonna cash in on the people's belt. <laughs> 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 that would that that is funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that see that. My favorite thing to come out of that night too. All and, right. Well, hey, all these memes, dude, are crazy, right? Dude, so good. So, so many, many hilarious memes. memes. So did you many see good the, memes. the the of course I'm sure you've seen the guy on Twitter that puts like the Sonic the Hedgehog rings yeah. on the rock uh, when he was yeah. speared with the with the yeah. hilarious scream man. So many great memes. The my night favorite. one press conference of like get out. Yeah, Girl with the glasses, Ooh. get out. <laughs> dude, you got that, that would make that would make my life if I if that was that reporter. That's awesome that that happened oh, to them. Can't forget about Chris Van Vliet. Boy, yeah, CVV. <laughs> Stupid question. Next. <laughs> God, Lee. Uh, my favorite meme was the uh, you know when you accidentally hurt your cousin when you're playing with him and it's like the rock. Yeah, over, like, crying. yeah, in the in the oh, playground. Yeah. In the playground. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Well, uh, let's move on to night two here. Um, yep. There, I, I'm seeing two matches here, so we're going to lump those two together. All right. I'm yep. sure if you're listening to this, you probably already know. So I'm going to spoil it for you here. We had Drew McIntyre versus Seth freaking Rollins. And then Drew, uh, Drew McIntyre versus Damian Priest. Let's talk about both of those here. Um, I think I led the way there with Bloodline Rules. So I'll let you take Bloodline it. Rules. Bloodline Rules. Uh, what do you think of this overall? Oh, man. I, I, if you look at it from a like top down, they started off with that claymore, and I was like, "All right, now we're for real. Like this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. We're, we, we are gonna go for a ride here." It was nothing but signature attacks the entire time. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you got claymores and you had curb stomps out, out the wazoo. Um, I think what made it special was CM Punk being involved there. I, I thought they would give CM Punk his own entrance versus being on the pre-show. Regardless, I enjoyed it because it was Super Seth. But it didn't feel like it was Nakamura Super Seth. It felt different. And Drew was amazing. The fact that Drew took his phone and tweeted, bored at work, LOL. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> incredible. Incredible. Like, come on, dude. I am, again, the second factory. is We might as well build it out, dude. We had the wing, but now we're going to build an entire factory for Drew because he deserves all the glaze, my friend. This dude was on fire and that moment where he was i cannot wait for cm punk versus drew like this is what i mean this is what mania is supposed to do is let you get a peek in the future drew versus cm punk is going to be so 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 good and the fact the way that cm punk was able to recreate the the um judgment day meme <laughs> like it was really solid man I, I i'm just upset that he cashed in because it ruined my rock cashing in I video. looked, I, I, if you were watching the video version, I looked shockingly backwards because that's every oh, baby yeah. face when the, when the Judgment Day music hits. Every, it was every... so good, dude. <laughs> It was so good. I, I, it, it was a great match. It was great. And yeah. it, didn't, it didn't overstay its welcome because when I was editing it, I was like, oh, well, this is 10 minutes. It was 10 yeah, minutes. And, it was great. and you called it. It was a finisher fest, but it worked for me. I, I, like it, yeah. it, it did work for me. They already went through all the other yeah. stuff before. Why do we need to see them do it again? They know each other like yeah. the back of their head. No, and and I think you nailed it on the head with CM Punk. I think CM Punk really added that extra layer of of um Armenianess. Yeah, a flavor almost. Yeah, a because little, because little spice. yeah, a little bit of of garnish. Because like you've said, we've seen this before, but we haven't seen this before with CM Punk CM involved. Punk, yeah. uh, so he really did make uh, he he helped made this match feel new and different. Um, even though Drew McIntyre already did that on his own uh, with how great his character was, but I, I was not bothered by the fact that this was a finisher fest because it just felt like uh, it was. 
it felt deeper than that. It didn't feel like the Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar uh, match where it was literally a four minute finisher fest. It, it felt a bit deeper than that. And I did feel like they were telling a good story with Drew McIntyre not being able to put away Seth Rollins, even though Seth Rollins came into this hobbled, tired and not fully focused. I, you could see the frustration building in Drew McIntyre. Like, how the hell have I not won yet? This was supposed to be easy, which is why I tweeted, bored at work, LOL. So, I, I again, that's my interpretation of the story that they told in the ring, and I really liked it. Um, that's why he's a Slammy Award winning, dude. That yeah. tweet got like 70 million impressions. L absolutely brilliant. Now, Insane. so Drew McIntyre does pick up the victory. Uh, double Claymore's on Seth freaking Rollins. Finally, Seth Rollins doesn't kick out. We get a nice little moment of like a teary-eyed Seth Rollins yep, and, and Drew me. McIntyre. You said uh, you deserved it. Yeah, man. I, I really like that. I, <laughs> I mean, does he deserve what comes next? Because what? then we had yeah, it was like, is that a double meaning? But it reminded me of a uh, Taker and Sean. Yeah. The, the Cowboys at okay. high noon, dude. Like going like, all right, man, you're in my respect. But <sighs> what happens next broke my heart. Dude, I it loved it. I it loved it. I hate the money in the bank. Unless it's LA Knight. Because LA Knight's going to bring back the prestige. Does, did Damien redeem himself? I mean, I guess so. At the end of the day, that's what the money in bank is supposed to be, right? Of course. If, you, if, you, if you accomplish and winning is not a failed attempt. And there was no way it was going to be a failed attempt because he cashed that bad boy in. And I, I want to say I, our criticisms of of Damien in the briefcase before are fair. They're, they st they still uh -huh. stand. They still stand. One hundred percent. I know Triple H called out the internet for yeah. being for Damien. I felt so called Damien out. Was, oh, but <laughs> hey, dude, that's the way you booked it, brother. <laughs> like, yeah. I hate to tell you that's the story you, you were Damien telling, dude. Like you let Judgment Day look like idiots with that briefcase for so many months. With Finn Balor getting his head smashed on it so many times. Um, but yeah, dude, it's going to be cool. I think a Damian Reign, it's going to work so well if it leads to the destruction of Judgment Day. It mm. needs to be the thing that slowly, you know, gets at him, like gnaws at Finn Balor. And maybe Mommy and Damian, they collide. I mean, there's, there's two ways they could do that, right? Is it going to be a boost to them or is it going to be a negative right. to them? Is it going to nerf jam, uh, Judgment Day? I want to throw this out into the universe. Maybe we get it for Backlash, maybe for Bash in Berlin. Uh, give me Imperium versus Judgment Day. Let's start moving the gears on there. Let's, let's start could, working that. Cool if, if Gunther challenges Damien. Yeah. They kind of planted that seed when when Damien came out to look at Gunther, but that, that was still weird to me. I think that was just a setup for Dom versus Gunther, but yeah. it was still weird. Um. The stuff with Damien, uh, with uh, CM Punk and Drew McIntyre before the cash in was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, if you are a, a poet, if you like the story aspect of this, um, let me let me dissect it for you. This was <laughs> sure. uh, this was a, a Drew McIntyre that spent so much time telling Seth Rollins that he wasn't focused on being a champion, that he was focused on and obsessed with something else. And then mm -hmm. what happens when Drew McIntyre becomes champion? He forgets about being a champion and instead decides to overfocus on this thing, this guy that he's been obsessed with for so long and CM Punk, causing him to also lose the World Heavyweight Championship. I thought it was brilliant. I, th dude, CM Punk had mentioned that his rehab is going way better than he anticipated. Took off his brace, started laying Summer some Slam. punches. Do you Come think it's SummerSlam? Slam? I mean, why bring him back at Backlash? There's Money a, in the Bank is time. big. Money in the Bank is big. It's an international uh, crowd. But then again, uh, Toronto booed the hell out of CM Punk last time he was there. So who knows? But but at the same time, it's like, I think you, you got to be extra careful with CM Punk. He he will tell you that he's a, he could have gone. He could have go, right? He could have been the ref. You got to be, you got to, you got to limit him, man. You got to slow him That's down. True. He still got that. He still got that AEW in him, man. All right, all right. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> slow down a little bit, man. So we both liked all of this then. Damian sure, Priest were excited. Cashing was fun. Okay. Uh, I hope I baited someone from AEW to say something. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, quick time out. Quick time out. That AEW Wednesday. Uh oh. Cringe. I don't think AEW should do it, but I, interesting. I, it's so stupid. It's, a, it's an interesting card to pull because it could backfire Why? tremendously. Why? See, like, it's good. What's it's the end make CM Punk. I think they're trying to make CM Punk look bad, but I think it's going to make him look really good. A guy that's As not in wrestler. their... But As why? He's not in their company. They're they're, you know what they're doing? They're trying to win a Twitter beef. That's, I know. That's, that's what that's, it is. It's embarrassing if that's, if well, this the, is legit the, what they're doing. If you want to talk about WC, like WCW versus WWE, their beef was all done in ring, like in the ring on television. 
for this to go down on Twitter, which has been going down for so many weeks and weeks and like, oh, what, third tier like productions from like in terms of like interviews and backstage podcasts and all that stuff. I can't wait to talk about it in the next podcast. Yeah. I mean, uh, like sense. at the surface level news that I have from it, if it's legit, if it's just, like, I, I just think it's so unnecessary. It, it's not going to help anyone. Oh, what? It's going to help CM Punk. I, if anything, it's gonna it's help going CM to help CM Punk. Him. But yes. so like, why even show Like if, if, if AEW is shown to be in the right from this footage, so who have you impressed? <laughs> Twitter, who cares? That's not gonna. That's not gonna earn you long term viewership. Not gonna viewership. bring the people in. It's no. Not gonna bring the people in. <sighs> gonna make. I'm telling you, if, if it's if it shows Punk in a negative light, there's gonna be people and be like, "Yeah, Punk's really cool." Anyways, the pride. Yeah. Bobby Lashley, Angel Dawkins, and Montez Ford uh, defeating the final testament. Carrying hey, cross Akam, and Razar at the desk. Okay, so that's Whoa. what I was gonna say. <laughs> it felt like WWE knew in their heart of hearts that this was not WrestleMania worthy. And it, it needed help. And yeah. it, they gave the, the stipulation, they gave it Snoop Dogg, and they gave it Bubba Ray Dudley. They did everything to make sure that these guys had life fest, that they weren't going to go out there to sink. So I yep. really appreciate the WWE's recognition that this needed more as opposed to yep. just a match for the sake of giving Bobby Lashley a WrestleMania match. They did everything in their power to make this entertaining and I feel like it it worked. Snoop Dogg on commentary, brilliant, genius, so good. So good. Grandma the fight again. <laughs> He said he said so many good things, dude. Damn, this looks like one of them hood fights. <laughs> like it was so good. He, he said that ain't no picnic table. They ain't no yogi boo boo out here. <laughs> it's like there's just so many and he's such a natural. And I think that that comes to as well is this another sign of the Paul Levesque era is that the commentators could do their thing. Like, sure, there's gonna be times of cringe. Look, I am a caster, I am a professional host, I get paid to do these things as well professionally for those of you that don't know i've hosted and casted multiple things on the internet i get i get paid to speak for a living i'm gonna say stupid and cringy things a lot all right did it's you just ever a matter loss of... in front of people oh on <laughs> times square in the rain no um, not but, seeing but, but, enough movement but the, but that's the plus the whole thing the beauty of this is when you give freedom and creativity to the people that are paid to do something they're gonna nail it and i think snoop dogg nailed it I was so surprised and it, it didn't over, he didn't overstay his welcome. He didn't over talk anybody. He was like the perfect note in that accompaniment between all the three. And he was making everybody else laugh in terms of the desk. I think you're right about the, the whole thing. They, they, they needed all this help. They needed the dressing. It was like a salad. It looked like a plain salad, but they added a little bit of those croutons and those bad boy. I'm like, I'm all for it. Uh, the big thing I liked about it the most was it was a dip into the nostalgia without being overly, overly too much. They weren't reliant like the, on it. And it was perfect because it's a Philly crowd. So yeah. it's ECW, Dudley Boys. Uh, I, I wonder where it was Devon. It would have been really cool to have Devon. But Bubby, Bub, Bubba was just enough. And uh, at the same time, they did the... <laughs> <laughs> was like, oh, dude. It, it was good. And um, to speak for Karrion Cross and the Final Testament, I do want to see them again. Yeah. I thought that after this matchup, and then I, we all predicted that Bobby was going to win. And shout out to Con Man for doing that prediction thing. That was really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I think majority of us predicted Bobby was going to win. I think it was unanimous. I don't know if Con Man's dog predicted it. <laughs> but when it comes down to it, I think I'd want to see Karrion again. I, I, I thought this would be the sunsetting of the final test. But no, I was like, nah, dude. They're, it was they're fun. Good. Dude, they're, B-Fab they're and Scarlet going through yeah, tables, dude. getting violent, yeah. kendo sticks. It was fun. Like, I, kendo sticks on Bobby? I was like, okay. And that promo they did before, I think it was in the pre-show, and I was like, again, unhinged carrying works, man. Doesn't have to be any... Look, we're wrestling fans. We sometimes just speak simple to us. Well, man. like he said, he actually said, he's like, enough with the Shakespeare. In, yes. in that promo on SmackDown. That, yeah, right that after was, that, he, I was like, that was their best promo. In, in like a year, dude. Yeah, yeah enough with the Shakespeare. More, lean more into the Jesse Ventura in you, brother. He has Please. a great Jesse Ventura impression. Let's move I on. Know. Oh, I know you're going to want to talk about this one. L.A. Knight. Yeah, taking on AJ Styles with a brand new entrance theme. Go, Sancho. Oh, he's getting. Oh, he's. Ah. Oh, he's. He's gearing up the glaze factory. He's putting on the glasses for the audio listeners. Go, Sancho. All right, look, let me let me tell you this as the number one LA Knight Glazer in the world, mind you. All right, in this podcast 
realm. LA Knight deserves better. And this was proven. They did not give LA Knight nothing to chew on here at WrestleMania. Instead, they gave him a deliverable, which is to be the Slim Jim guy to deliver keys to an old lady, nothing against her, to drive a Slim Jim skyline. No stipulation, no title on the line. The crowd was white hot for LA Knight. Everything that man did was a yeah, right behind it in a good rule. Yeah, Philly loved him. This guy, again, is a byproduct of the WWE. This dude is homegrown. This dude has earned every single moment in the sun. You cannot rob this from him. The WWE needs to give him the money in the bank. He is the next generation. This generation is DDP. He was a solid match between AJ Styles. But the reason why we checked out is because there was no mania-worthy moments for it to do. There was no spot on the table. There was no, There's oh my God, moment spot. of getting, no, there was no like getting thrown through a pane glass. There was no coast to coast from like Shane McMahon. There was not like an, oh my God, spot at all. No, I disagree. A, the jump into the, the top the, the, rope, the German yeah, suplex the that German landed on his face. Was the, oh, yeah, yes, yes, I agree. But I'm talking about something that, that will be on a WrestleMania tapes. No, it wasn't that. You're time. right. You're right. It wasn't, it wasn't that. going to be that. Yeah. And again, it's because. They're not giving L.A. Knight a lot to work with here. You could give L.A. Knight A.J. Styles, sure, but there's only so much A.J. Styles could do because A.J. Styles is not going to be the guy that's going to sell you that make you look like a million bucks, a la Dolph Ziggler, a la J.D. McDonough. All I got to say is I was let down by this match. Oh, really? Okay. I think we're, we're different. I, I, yeah, the, 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 I have the glasses on, right? Uh, that's right, the, yeah. The, the only thing that was the saving grace in this match was they protected the BFT as the ultimate ender for the finish. I am surprised AJ didn't kick out. Um, and I just think they didn't, they didn't give a lot of LA Knight to overcome. Like, let LA Knight get hit with the Phenomenal Forearm. I, I, I understand that they're protecting that as well. Let LA Knight kick out of a, a, a Phenomenal, like a Styles Clash. Instead, he countered all that. He countered the 450 Splash. There was just nothing to say that LA Knight is that face that could overcome a lot. It was just LA Knight doing his thing, hitting the BFT. And some people in the comments will say that LA Knight is a born wrestler. I disagree. This man could put on a great match. But I think it's, it's because they don't want to make LA Knight too strong, man. He gets nerfed constantly. He going out there in Illumination Chamber. T tell me if I'm wrong, I mean, by the way. All right? I'm open for that. No, 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 no. They, I think you... They, I think they put him out there in Illumination Chamber. He hits two BFTs on Randy and Drew. But then he gets interfered by Petty AJ. I, I, I'm just saying, they, they didn't give LA Knight a lot to chew on. And, the, and for him to get his mania moment with an ad, and people want to talk about that the Prime Bottle, which, by the way, I owe you 10 gifted. They want to talk about the Prime Bottle logo in the middle of the ring. The most obnoxious thing is all the logos everywhere else, okay? On the LED screens, presented by, all that kind of stuff was annoying. And the Slim Jim shoved into the LA Knight's entrance that mania bothered me. I liked it. I liked the match. I liked the ad integration. Uh, it was very LA Knight, to, you know, to 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 do the shilling for um, for the what is what did they kept saying? Uh, bite into a long boy. The long boy. The long boy. <laughs> they showed a section of the crowd called the Long Boy Gang. <laughs> Santi, that's the stupidest thing ever, Santi. <laughs> the stupidest thing ever. I don't know, man. I'd cool it with the stupidest thing ever with the guy wearing the LA Knight glasses who can't see stupidest. anything. I can't. Well, what, were you able to look at the at the eclipse with those? I should have brought them. My <laughs> left eye hurts. <laughs> <laughs> look, I like the match. I I think that from like fundamentally from an in ring perspective, I think it was LA Knight's best match in a really really long time. It was a pretty normal match for AJ Styles. I will give it to you that it didn't really have that like ah yeah WrestleMania moment. Um, the stipulation wasn't there. The uh the uh, I guess the I don't want to necessarily say gold because I, it doesn't always have to be for titles, but I just, you know, we I harken back to what you said earlier. I, I harken back to what you said earlier with like a lot of these matches, they have a now what this doesn't, this was one of the few matches where like, I don't know what the now what is of this. It's because LA Knight won too clean. Like, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying like LA Knight should squash AJ and AJ did get have moments but why didn't LA Knight kick out of something why wasn't sure. LA Knight put put into the calf crusher you know what I mean like where's that sharpshooter stone cold moment for LA Knight and, and that's what I'm trying <laughs> 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 
I uh, listened to the Oh, oh, oh LA Knight just needed the one of the most iconic moments in WrestleMania <laughs> history. Give him something <laughs> to work with. He got the long boy section. Yeah. And you will take that. Yeah. Look, I'm giving yeah. I'm giving it a thumbs up, your thumbs down. They should have made this an I quit match so LA Knight could be on the mic, cutting promos throughout the entire thing and making everybody laugh. You know what? That would have yeah, that's funny. I would have liked Thank that. You. I would have liked that. Thank I would have liked you. that. Uh, triple threat match for the United States Championship. Logan Paul. I feel like what signing that? off. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> versus Kevin Owens versus Randy Orton. United States Championship match. I'll take this one here. Uh, I really like this. Uh, I liked Logan Paul's entrance. I like the shenanigans as well with Kevin Owens um, driving Randy. back to pick up Randy so that they could <laughs> drive by and, and basically have a two on one handicap match against Logan Paul. Yeah. It was the it was the funeral of Logan Paul for the first six minutes of this match. And yeah. I loved it. Then they're just trying to whatever you can do. I can do better type of situation trying to take out Logan Paul. I thought it was brilliant. Very buddy copish from them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, like, oh, you you have to do it like this. Oh, okay, let me try. They're doing like the backdrops on Logan Paul on the uh, on the table. It's great. And then when they turn, and then Randy was like, "Hey, man, hey, my bad." Hey, hey, like, come on, man. <laughs> and then Kevin Owens is like, "Are we gonna do this right now?" And he's like, "I guess we're gonna do this right now." So yeah, it reminded me of like a, like I mentioned, like a good buddy cop movie. And and I, I know people did, mainly. If I had to put a number. Maybe once again, 80% of the audience did not know who Speed is. They don't know who I show Speed is, but this is our realm. This is the content creator realm that we know he is. He's the most popular YouTube streamer in the world up there, right? He's up there with the Kai Sinats yeah. of the world at the time. And, and for him to be at Mania is bizarre to me. Like It is. Like, like it, and, and at the same time, I've never seen... Well, no, correct. I, I correct myself. Umaga versus Stevo was probably the last time I saw <laughs> a celebrity eat a receipt that hard. And for, for the Speed Sparta to like, kick, <laughs> dude, he for, sent the flying. I dude, loved it. I, I I think Speed got into it, and of course, you know the cussing. A lot of people had a problem with on the internet from what I saw on, on Twitter. Um, and he shoved Randy. And for those of you who don't know, there's a code. Wrestlers cannot look like punks. Mm -hmm. And he shoved, really shoved Randy Orton. And I thought, I was like, no, dude, you done goofed. All you had to do was just stand there, right? Maybe just kind of shove Randy, but don't try to shove Randy where Randy has to naturally brace, he had to brace. brace himself and look like a uh, uh, content creator. Let's put us us where we are, right? Could shove the Viper. And then when Randy goes, why did you do that? I have no beef with you. And then Spartan <laughs> kicks him. The stiffest kick I ever seen from Randy. No, dude, I was dying <laughs> laughing. It was so just stiff <laughs> kick. Like, there's no faking that. That had to hurt, dude. He flew, and I thought. I think Randy was like, I think I could kick him as hard as I can because he has his padding, right? I think, but I think, <laughs> dude. Okay, but before you keep going, did you ever watch Daddy Daycare? Yes. Okay, dude. It reminded me of when they were wrestling in the carrot and broccoli costumes. That's what. That's what I show speed reminded me of. And then the bottle cap came off and <laughs> and then he Randy puts him up and then he barks right back on his face again. Dude, it's awesome. And then it was like that's that's what makes Randy so great. Is if, if Randy is gonna he picks up on something and it, as an improver, he knows how to keep it going. The callback, you know, it was immediate worked really well and yeah speed sold that RKO. He was dead. He had no the choice to. That looked like it yeah. legitimately took knocked him out. It was amazing and like i said 80 percent of the audience don't know who speed is but and i think at the end of the day i this is the wwe trying to reach out to the younger demographic to show like yo move. this is great this is this is the equivalent of don't hate me it's like cindy lopper being out there like mike tyson being out there muhammad ali right this is they're trying to get the next yeah. generation going and get everybody talking because as soon as that happened on twitter all the content creator websites and things of that sort started talking about this wrestlemania like the uh, dexeritos and all those kinds of things started talking about mania and that's what the wd wanted yeah i think i think it's a brilliant um i guess real world recognition of where the WWE can get eyeballs new eyeballs from because yeah mm -hmm. you could cater to the hardcore on something but that's not getting you new eyeballs because the hardcore are already watching catering to an entirely new audience that doesn't know who you are 
does create a moment of confusion with the hardcore because like, who's this I show speed, but really that's the tip of the iceberg because everything that's underneath the ocean is the millions and millions and millions of people that know who I show speed is. Right. And, and the content that will fall out from this. Speed will talk thousand about percent. it. You'll show it on the stream. Kai Sinat will react to it. Los Boyles will react to it. There's Santi so Zap. many people. Santi Zap. <laughs> Hate you. Mania still rides, brother. Oh, that thing's dead. Uh, I, not, I like the, the... The shirt has been created. The, oh, Stay the, tuned. the triple threat back and forth, too. Like, going from the brass knuckles to countering each other's finishers. I love mm -hmm. the pop-up powerbomb countered into that RKO. So good. It was so, so good. good. I like that Logan Paul won by taking advantage of that RKO, uh, mm -hmm. by throwing out Randy and doing the a beautiful... Beautiful frog splash to pick up the victory. He looked like he double jumped in that frog splash. Dude, he did. He right? really did. He, he, he was like, it was one of those moments where you jumped on a trampoline and you're like, oh my God, I'm still in the air. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't understand how you don't overshoot. Like he lands so perfectly. Like that would be my concern. Like what if I over jump and I land on nothing? <laughs> That'd be embarrassing. I mean, Kevin Owens did a great moonsault as well. So Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I love this. I thought this was great. It got a thumbs up for me. You liked it too? Oh, 100%. All this right. felt more of like a mania shenanigans yeah. type of thing. And it didn't take away from the performers in the ring either, a la J uh, Kelsey. I agree. Uh, Bailey and EO Sky for the WWE Women's Championship. Uh, hit me. What do you think? This was great. The, 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 I, I think this is one of those matches that will be very underrated. Like, you, mm -hmm. you're not going to remember. You're not going to. Uh, Refer or refer it to a lot and when it comes to the WrestleMania 40, but if you really sat down and thought, thought about it, it definitely deserved like a top five in the car in the entire re matches. And Bailey looked phenomenal. I thought what EO did was really classic wrestling where you focus on a knee to set up for the if the finish. I love that EO hit the moonsault and Bailey kicked out, and then EO hit standing moonsault, turnbuckle moonsault into the top rope moonsault and still couldn't get down uh, Bailey. And then that move where she was going for the rose plant from Bailey and then EO countered it. I was like, that dude, EO's really, EO is sick. Yeah. At that moment, I fell in love with EO again. I was like, dude, she's awesome. And very New Japan-y, like, little, not that many false finishes, but that moment reminded me of like that, you know, Kenny Omega, Will Ospreay, hand springing out of a finish and just like going like, no, 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 you're not gonna get me that easy. And I, I thought if the if the, the match was given a little bit more time, it would have overstayed its welcome. But the, the crowd was into it. They gave Bailey the love that she deserved with the UK chant. And I, I cannot wait to see what Bailey does going forward. I think EO could I really think a rematch is warranted. Because damage control needs to be involved yes. in that rematch in some way. Sancho, fact or cap, this was better than Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch. God Lee, that's a that's a bold question, my friend. Mm -hmm. I'll answer it. I think it was. I think it was way better than Rhea Ripley versus I Becky Lynch. I don't think so. I think so. I don't think so. I think I think Rhea showing that she could go with Becky and survive some of the things. I, I like I said, Becky Lynch did that match was cut short for time. I think the way it was, but that that Rhea Ripley that. Ball was kind of. I dude, if I dude, if I was sick, strep the, throat, the Rock went twenty eight minutes with a torn with a torn groin. You don't know that. But the Rock told us it was cut short. Twenty eight minutes was cut short. I mean, those guys could have gone for an hour. They could have. They could have. They could I think have. that this was better than Becky Lynch versus okay. um, versus Becky Lynch. Sorry, we Becky all Lynch could have versus Rhea. Opinions, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. Play with you. Uh, play <laughs> okay. With you. All right. No, no, no. Sancho. In your case, I just I just wanted to trigger you for a second. Go ahead. Uh, I I really liked it. Um, I liked the back and forth that these two had. I loved Io Sky in this match. Her counters, uh, to put uh Bailey in those cross faces. That, like when mm -hmm. she countered that Macho Man elbow drop, caught it into into a cross face. I thought it was brilliant, but. I popped hard, dude, for the rose plant into the, into the handspring. That really was very new Japan. I really like this match. I like that um, this also kind of marked a new era as well because we had Bailey come out with a new entrance theme. Not sure if you picked up on that as well. Um, and I do want to see a rematch. I would love to see these two go at it again at Backlash because oh, I yeah. still think that there's Perfect. quite a bit of meat left on this bone. Mm -hmm. Um this, up to that point, from an in-ring perspective, was actually my favorite match of the night <laughs> up until that point. I thought it was um, less overbooked and less, uh, like, just mm. when, when, like, just 
the in-ring work rate. You know, I'm not talking yes. about narrative stories. A traditional match. As yes. a traditional match, up yes. to that point in night two, it was my favorite match of the night. Like I said, yeah, very underrated. It's gonna yeah. go to like it's gonna go underneath everyone's radar. Just like this entire run with Bailey. People weren't talking about it going into this match. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and, and, and you know what? It wasn't one of those, oh, bathroom break matches. No, it no. wasn't one of those. Well, it wasn't one of those where you're like, I'm not going to pay attention to this match because I'm waiting for the main event. It actually said, no, you need to pay attention to this match because we're we're cooking here. We're, Sacha, we're did you go to the match. bathroom? Did you go to the bathroom no. at all during night two? At night, uh, yes. When did I you find to. time? I did not. I held that shit in for the entire night. <laughs> I, I went right right after this match. I was like, oh, you know, the, I, I already know the video package. Oh, fair so enough. I, That's smart. Time for me to go. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that was bad for my kidneys. I was there the whole the whole night with the whole kid caboodle still is still Jeez, inside no. of me. No, dude. The excitement from night two, I would have let out a little pee. I had to go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's talk about some excitement that might have made you pee. The main of, do you like that transition? Uh, yeah. You like it's that? It's perfect. That's on brand for you. <laughs> um, Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns and bloodline rules for the undisputed. Sorry, undisputed. I can't do it like Samantha Irvin can. WWE Universal Championship. The entrances, brother. Love them. You said that they saved them for night two. They came out hard with the entrances. I wish Roman went a little harder, though. A little bit harder. He, You know what? I think he just went too hard last year with the Ganondorf yeah. like, piano. That I don't think he could top that. Well, did you see the on the internet the one of, from the um, the custom one from the YouTube where they had the like the the chants like it had like a with a fire and then the lights go out and then the you should check it out. Mm. I, I'll I'll try to show it to you, but. To me, Cody Rhodes had the in-game entrance because it was like a war field and the flag was there yeah. flying, the smoke, and then Brandy was there, and then the, the 3D printed helmet. It looked too clean. Um, <laughs> very, very, very Triple H-like, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> very Triple H-like. This, to me, is what WrestleMania is all about. It's yes, the sir. spectacle. It's good versus bad. It's the moment of when they're staring at each other, and I just wish we had light bulbs because there'd be so many light bulbs because everyone would be capturing the moments of watching this 1,316 days run of Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare, who's trying to win for his legacy. This is his only shot, and we all knew what was stacked against him. We were all waiting for bloodline rules, the bloodline interference. And what it was cool is because the first half was all Roman carrying, you know, it was Roman doing his thing, Roman being Roman, saying all the funny lines, the funny quips and saying he can't hold it. Yeah, he, he can't deal with me. He's he's not going to be able to beat me. And like it was a really cool swan song for Roman to be able to get those moments in, to be able to come across as still the tribal chief. And then when it got into what I when right before I tweet, I go, here we go. The bloodline in game shenanigans. Here's what comes the fun. And for the for Jimmy to come out. Uh oh, I think I've lost Sancho here for a second. It's all right. We're gonna fix this. Okay. Uh, I think your 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 audio's here. I'll fix the the video if you want to keep talking. Okay. For uh, Jimmy and uh, Jay and all to come out, and then it goes into the uh, solo Sokoa spots. It's it's kind of like a what sword I want to go through. It's kind of like a hey, here's a montage of how everything has come to be. You had the birth of Roman in the Thunderdome. You had the inclusion of the bloodline into the interference of Jimmy Sokoa, and then it got into a different stratosphere with John Cena. Before before you get into into all of that stuff, I want to make a claim, and I, I'd like to get your opinion here. Before okay. before the bloodline stuff started happening and everybody got involved, before it became Endgame, the match between Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes, um, we're, we're getting we're getting great finishers, a ton of false uh, false counts, we're getting uh, table spots, a lot of great trash talking. Without all of the stuff that happened afterwards, to me it was still a five out of five match, better than their yes. WrestleMania 39 match. So. Um, I think that this match is going to be entirely remembered for its final five minutes, understandably so, because it may be one of the wildest five minutes in professional wrestling history. But I also don't want us to take away from the fact that the two guys that were advertised for this match, in my eyes, put on a five star classic before all of the before the five star classic turned into a 17 star classic. Sorry, 16 star classic. It wasn't in the Tokyo Dome. It loses a star for that. Oh, I, I think like uh, I think people may have a problem with uh, the way it was going to be produced 
Uh, we predicted that. I mean, I didn't mind it, dude. I thought it was cool because everything that happened had a reason. It was all valid. The only one that didn't have a reason was The Undertaker. Yeah, he did. What's your thoughts on Taker? No, 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 no. Taker, uh, he lost the status of the of the big dog in the yard the to Roman Reigns. The big dog in the yard. That that was a that was a big a story. Cut. That's it, a deep cut. It's though, kind no, of, not if you were around back then. That was like the biggest story of that year's WrestleMania, and that was like the death, like the death of the Undertaker. For sure. I mean, because it was like it's my yard now. Yeah. Well, that's a great. Don't get me uh, wrong. Promo. I still think it's a stretch. It's a deep cut. But I, I I appreciated it. Right, right. I think, I mean, I saw the internet as well uh, pick up on this thing, and I did pick up it as well, that it's the Reaper, it's the dead man that's the ultimate final boss at the end of the I day. Like that. Um, you know, taking out The Rock. I thought The Rock did really solid for his moments here in the ring. He really sold it facial-wise. His expressions of shock and, and being afraid of The Undertaker kind of put back that, spookiness and taker very boneyard taker where he pops out of nowhere it's just like poor aj so you know i i thought it was cool and i know people will want to critique i'm seeing criticisms on the chokes i thought dude for their age and the size of taker and then size of under of uh, the rock i thought it was a great choke uh, yeah slam. really i didn't know people were complaining about that i thought it was yeah, fine yeah. hey hey it was it was solid i like what john cena did and i think wrestlemania set up a perfect gateway for rock in cena three come on dude you know you, you, you don't it. need to sell me on that you're talking to the to the cena rock mark i love their feud I, and i'm saying that this one would be better because i think they understand their limits like if they would wrestle like a hogan in rock and they just keep it simple and don't do anything too crazy maybe have a signature and finisher fest like uh death and drew uh, we would eat it up man i 100 percent uh, I love the shenanigans of this match. I loved, uh, you know, I know that we're, everyone's trying to find symbolism and meaning in everyone that got involved. Uh, I know the Taker one's a bit of a stretch, but it works for me. Uh, Cena yep. coming out, I nearly had a heart attack. The the face off between Cena and The Rock. God damn, man. I was and, so, dude, oh. And it's not the Rocky face off against. It's, it's the final boss. It's the final boss, dude. And and that's not Cena anymore. That's Ricky Stanicki, baby. <laughs> oh, dude. It was a nerf Cena going up against a overpowered Rock. And the Rock squashed him. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what he should do. And at the same time, come on. Do you look at me? I can't see you. You're going to have to look at me. Metaphorically, you thought John Moxley was coming out. You of did. course I did, dude. You did. Of course you I did. You did, dude. Are we I, still recording? We're all good, right? Hell yeah, we're all good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You had to. You had I to. I did. I did. I thought, okay, you know what? They they struck a deal for a one-off appearance for John Moxley. A ten million dollar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My dude, I I was a jaw dropped because I thought my, that Moxley was coming out. Don't get me wrong. Like it just be, that was if that's the disappointment of the night, then we're good. We, 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 we feasted tonight, fellas. Yes. Um, I like the symbolism of Seth Rollins. I pointed it out on Twitter, went a little bit viral there with my post saying um, that Seth Rollins kept his promise. He told Cody Rhodes that he would be his shield. And that's exactly what happened there in the main event. I loved the imagery of Cody Rhodes on one side of the ring, Seth Rollins on the other side of the ring, both with their backs to Roman Reigns, with Roman Reigns with a chair about to swing it at Cody Rhodes and ending the match. But then we hearken back to these heels focusing on what they shouldn't be focusing on. It happened to Gunther. It happened to Drew McIntyre. And then it happened to the Tribal Chief, who even though, I think this is beautiful, even though he's accomplished everything imaginable in the WWE, is going to go down arguably as the greatest performer in WWE history. He still, his character still hadn't let go of the plan B still. How could you, you can't, that's his, that's his brother. That was his brother. The hounds of justice. They went through everything. They came up together in this business. Beautiful they dude. Saw, it was they awesome. Saw, they saw heights. They never could figure it out. And it was Seth Rollins that betrayed them, that ruined everything that sacrificed their trust for a run at the gold right and i and love the, i love that he chose to pay to choked. finally pay back seth rollins for it to finally try and exercise that demon and it cost him everything and hey let this be a lesson you gotta let go of your past your past will haunt you and stop you and then a lot of those moments were the past haunted people here and what a what a great moment and hey 
if you had to be nitpicky, I thought, you know, maybe Cody could have kicked out of one more spear just to solidify that it is Cody that did this Dude, by himself. He's, he's kicked out of the spike and spear. I, I, I know, right? He kicked out of, I'm talking yeah. about right after that moment, right? Oh, okay. It's like, boom, spear. Oh, Roman's going to win. One, two, three, kick out, right? He kicks out. But I'm just being, you know, that, that's yeah. just being a stickler for a stickler reasons, just to act like we're a critic here. But when Cody Rhodes, when he was doing it, the triple crossroads, the super finisher, as they say in the 2K world, He's sitting in his super finish, and he, he and Michael Cole says, finish the story. Wow. Nah, dude, actual cinema, wow. man. It was, it was chills. Wow, it was chills. Right? Um, so good. Like I, I'm still kind of overwhelmed with emotion from it because I think that was the greatest WrestleMania main event of all time. <laughs> I really think it's the greatest WrestleMania. For what WrestleMania is meant to be, I think, I think for the expectations, yes, we were expecting the world, and we got the world. Dude, we got it. And, we... and then when we got the world, we're like, oh, the world. Yeah. Um, but it's Stone Cold. Um, but the, <laughs> um, no, dude, I, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I have to think about it a little bit more. But yeah. I, I'm up there with you. Does it beat Hogan Rock for me? That's the question. But that wasn't a main event. I know it wasn't a main event, but. I, I don't even remember the main event for that exactly one, exactly that's 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 a good that's how good Rock and Hogan was right and Rock and Hogan I think that what makes Rock and Hogan special is it hit the inner kid in me you know this was all before Hogan was you know was Hogan but when Hogan hulked up for that moment and for that split second I forgot that Rock was going to win right you forget that Rock's going to win and I think that's the only thing that was missing for me in this moment of I think Roman's going to win. I didn't see that. Maybe. Maybe after the, the spike in the spear, but I think it's because John Cena didn't come out. It's because, the, you know, the, the I, I was waiting for John because I that was the internet. We ruined it, right? We're like, ooh, look at this poster in the background on the truck. <laughs> Maybe John Cena's going to And I was there too, all right? We were all there. But it, it, it's just that's the difference between the past and now is like, you know, we're all trying to work on clicks and get likes and views. And I will say, imagine how hyped this, this, this world, this, this would have been at like WrestleMania 16, no internet. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. That would have like, been insane. That would have been insane. Hogan, that's what made Hogan and Rock so good because it wasn't like Toronto trying to hijack the show ahead of the time. It it's was pronounced Toronto. Toronto. And whatever. We don't pronounce the hard T at the end. All right. Just want to say that out there as somebody that lives near and around Toronto. Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> Tarana's mouth and all your candy but, asses. But 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 hey man, shout out to the Rock. Without the Rock being the final boss, I don't I don't think we would Question. got to those levels of stress. Did it not feel like it was set up for the Rock to be way more involved in this? Kind of, sorta. But I, I I think they were afraid to be overproduced. I think what I would have liked. They were to the most was, overproduced thing ever. Though. I know, but, <laughs> uh, but it, it, it could have been worse. Like it could have been much more. Like I I thought we were gonna get like a like lineup versus lineup stare down. Like I thought that was going to happen like a in game and then a big brawl. Like right? Ace like of that. Steel. Yeah. Yeah, like eight, yeah, exactly. Like a, like an action figure. Like I thought that was going to happen. And then like the, the everything was going to unfold, but they, they chose to rely on, on pops to keep that momentum going, you know, this pop, this pop. Um, no, I, you know, I don't, I don't know, man. I think we just need to value it for what it was and appreciate that we saw something historical happen. I mean, just now, all this recording and a, and a total eclipse happened, and that's something we're not going to see for twenty years. In the next, to uh, it's so, <laughs> it's so poetic that a, a total eclipse happened, and I lived in Austin, Texas, and the, the totality of it, and seeing the complete sun be blotted out by the moon and be in darkness, and Cody Rhodes you know becomes a new champion Adrenaline. within 24 hours in right and, th and that means i don't i don't think we're going to see another roman in in our lifetime I, I truly don't think that will happen because roman was the perfect storm he arrived when the pandemic happened he carried those belts he saved wrestling i i, I will say that again he saved wrestling wrestling was was one of those things that we all thought like, dude, in the pandemic, what's going to happen? Wrestling's not going to be able to survive that. They need the crowd. You, we are, they're going to, they're already hemorrhaging money. And what happens? Roman Reigns happens. And then the company sells. We're like, oh my God, the, they're going to sell to the, the, the Saudi Arabia guy and things are going to be changed. Well, what happens to the soul of WWE? It's going to be, and then TKO comes in Endeavor and they, they save the wrestling again. And that, all that would not happen without the star power of Roman Reigns.
acknowledge the title. I acknowledge. I 100% acknowledge him. Uh, yeah, it was just a great night to be a professional wrestling fan. And they, okay. they, they made sure to end the show with I love professional wrestling from Michael Cole. Should have been pro wrestling is cool, Santi. We were so close. <laughs> uh, we almost made it to the main event of WrestleMania. <laughs> almost made it to the we're main all, event of WrestleMania. We're always the LA Knights of the world, <laughs> my friend. All right, um, Sancho. It was really good, dude. I, I overall. Oh, same here. Oh, I thought I, I, I'm like sticking Chris. to. I think it's the greatest WrestleMania of all time. I'm very curious. I have to think about it. Yeah, yeah. I I, I'll, I'll it. definitely come back to you in a in a few days and ask you where you land. But um, I thought that it was just such a great show, Sancho. Where can people find you? What are you working on these days? You can find me at Sancho West on X. Please follow that Twitter. You can find me on Sancho West on Instagram and Sancho West Wrestling. We crossed over. Thank you so much. We're like we went from 10k. Now we're at 12k after Mania. So thank you for the support. And uh, a quick prediction: Raw after Mania. Did we get new Bloodline members? Yeah, I think this did is a, get, th this is Fatu Jacob Fatu and Tonga. Also, do we get MJF? No. Okay. Do you think we get him? Because I'm happy to take another uh, gifted from you. What am I in the hole? Ten already? You're you're in the hole ten. We can do we can do five. Yeah. We can. Do, you know what? I'll get. I'll be. I'll give you odds. Five. Oh. If you win, then your full ten is forgiven. Basically, giving you ten. Oh, double or nothing, essentially. Is that fair? Sure. All right. I can't wait to get fifteen subs. You absolute bum. A real real prediction. Seamus returns. Thank you. I like that. I like that. All right, folks, thank you so much for listening to this ep extra bonus episode of Wrestling School. I don't want you to think that this was the only episode this week. There's an extra one. Thank you very much for listening. Check out the Patreon. Check out Sancho. Check me out wherever it is that you want to find me. I'm everywhere. Just, just, just look for me. Cheers, everybody. Goodbye.